What's up, YouTube? If you're looking for everything that you need to create only the finest content on YouTube, then look no further than what's in this bag. My name's Lane, and we're gonna get into it. So, I'm a new content creator here on YouTube, and after doing piles of research, I've gotten everything that I think I need in this bag. There are some expensive items, however, there are also some cheaper items, I wanted to get everything that I needed without breaking the bank. So our main goal kind of was efficiency of items. I hope I did it, we'll go through it. And of course, if you do get value out of this video, make sure that you hit that like button and the subscribe button, even ring the bell if you're feeling it, or leave a comment down below. I also did wanna say that down below in the description, I will be linking all of the items that we talk about. Uh, so if you are interested in purchasing any of them, go ahead and go to the affiliate link. It'll help out, I guess. That said, I did purchase all of this stuff on Black Friday, and I was specifically looking for a whole lot of deals. So this video is in four parts. First is gonna be the bag, then the camera, then the accessories, and lastly, all the little extra bits that come along with everything. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the bag. So this is the PGY Tech One Mo backpack, 35 liters. Uh, it's pretty large, but also I am a pretty large person, so it seems to be appropriate size for me. Kind of the main reason that I picked this bag up specifically is because I saw a lot of YouTubers review about it. They all had really good reviews about it, and I thought, hey, it's a backpack. So on the outside, there is this big old bag. It has a nice waterproof coating, and it also has a bunch of pockets. But let's talk about these straps. So here, we got strap one, strap two. Uh, it feels very good. There is a tiny little uh, chest strap there. It, that could be better, in my opinion. Uh, it's pretty flimsy. And there's also no kind of like waist straps on the front. We have a just a nice cover. You can definitely stick a bunch of whole stuff here. There are also some straps that will let you attach things like drones, tripods, basically whatever you want. You can secure it. There are a whole bunch of these little anchor points that let you attach things like that. On this side, there is a either like a water bottle holder or a tripod holder. I use it to hold my tripod, which is currently holding my camera right now. Uh, and then there's also kind of this another strap to secure the tripod. Anyways, moving on into the inside of the bag. And then here is the holy grail, the moment everyone has been waiting for. This is it the camera bag. So you can see that there are these lovely dividers and this also large part in the bottom, which is another container. So it is very modular as a camera bag and it has all these compartments for all the stuff that we want and that we're going to be talking about. And there's also this extra bit. Normally, I would say the camera goes in this extra bit. Right now I have another lens, which again, we'll talk about in there, uh, but for now, we can just shove that aside. After that, you can kind of see that it just does have all these little pockets with various stuff in it. And then there are also these side pockets, and we can unzip these side pockets and see what's inside. In this case, it's gonna be a bunch of battery pouches. Uh, and then this has just access to the bag itself through a different area. And you can access these pockets even when the bag, the main section is closed. So it's very helpful to quickly be able to grab the most essential items that you need in there while also keeping your more expensive items more secure that they can only be accessed through the back pouch. Next up is the camera. Uh, however, I am using the camera, so it's gonna be a little bit hard to show you, but I'll just tell you. The camera that I decided to get is the Sony A7C. So not the a7s3 uh, which is obviously an incredible camera it seems but it is a little bit out of budget we decided instead to go with the a7c which is a compact version of the a7 III uh, but it's just a little bit lighter uh, a little bit newer and it is uh, very good in my opinion so far again i don't have a lot of cross reference i can't really compare these things apples to oranges to other cameras i just don't have that experience I'm relying a lot on what other people are saying, but in my limited experience with what I've used with it so far, it does seem very good. It is a uh, mirrorless camera, full-framed. 
I did purchase it with a bunch of bundled items on Black Friday. Uh, the total price was $1,800, which is about its normal pricing, uh, but it did come with a little bit of extras. And the other main competitor uh, against the A7C was going to be the Canon EOS R, but the main tipping point for me turned out to be the lens choice. So let's talk about lens choice. What did I go with? Well, I went with the Tamron 17 to 35 2.8, which you're watching right now. Uh, it seems like a very good lens. It gets me that 17 range, which will be very handy for things like real estate, architecture, the wide angle stuff. It's not super wide angle. There are other wider options, uh, but I felt that the 17 was enough and will hopefully get me where I need. And then on the other end of the spectrum, 35 uh, should cover me most of the time for any of my more standard to wider angle shots that I'm going for. The reason that I went with the Tamron specifically, the other option was the Zeiss. It just has that weather ceiling on the end. Uh, I did want a definitely weather, not proof, but a very weather functional camera. Uh, I do live in the Pacific Northwest. It is very wet, very rainy most of the time. So that's gonna be helpful to have that little extra protection has a constant 2.8 aperture. Uh, 2.8 will hopefully be good enough for most of the things that we want to do. I do want to do a lot of kind of like lower light situations, in which case it might hurt us a little bit, but for the price point, which was only $800, uh, I felt that it was definitely the best option for us uh, for what we needed to do on the wide angle spectrum uh, while keeping costs down, but still being a very good lens. And after the wide angle lens, let's talk about something that we can actually show you. The Tamron 70 to 200. So we stuck with the double Tamron lifestyle. It's got a bunch of attachments on it right now, but this is the Tamron 70 to 200 2.8. Uh, we got it for a whole lot of the same reasons that we got the 17 to 35. Um, and this is for more telephoto action maybe taking pictures of some animals, uh, maybe doing some sports photography, and just having a little bit of extra extra zoom and reach. Lens was $1,100 reduced. Uh, it did come again with a bunch of accessories, basically the camera body and the two lenses got us a whole bunch of extra little accessories, little things that we need. Um, not the greatest of stuff, but just a little extra stuff to have, like uh, extra tiny memory cards, um, a extra little shotgun mic, um, a, this, there was some really good stuff too, such as this peak design. So this came in the package. This is a little peak design, um, back cap. I don't know exactly what you want to call it, but it does, uh, a little spoiler alert, but we did go with the peak design kind of handling system. So we have these little dangly dudes and we have a bunch of camera straps, uh, to attach it to, and all that kind of came bundled in with the camera and two lenses. Speaking of Peak Design stuff, I guess we can go ahead and showcase the other Peak Design things we have. So on the bag itself, we've opted for the Peak Design camera capture clip. Basically everyone's raving about these. You just attach them to your strap, your belt, etc. Uh, and you have a little plate on the bottom of your camera, but it also attaches to here very securely. I definitely have used that and it has come in a whole lot of handy. I am already a big fan of it. Moving on to, you know, straps. Let's talk about straps. Uh, so right here, a Peak Design camera strap. So again, this is just kind of extra stuff, but it is relevant to the camera and it also came in the camera bundle. So we're just talking about this. Um, right now. <laughs> so this just goes like so. You can also, you know, do it around. Basically whatever floats your boat. Uh, it does have a little Peak Design clippies, which are on a camera, which are on here. So a lot, very modular, very easy to work with and use. And rounding out the camera, we have what uh, is attached to the camera. And so we have a small rig camera cage uh, onto the camera. And then attached to that is the Sennheiser MK200. So that is the audio that you are hearing right here. Uh, the reason that I went oh, with the Sennheiser MK200 over things like the Rode VideoMic Pro is 
a lot of aesthetics. I like how it looks. I like how the Dead Cat looks. Uh, it's smaller. It, I like Sennheiser products. The other thing I was looking at is the kind of dual capsule one because I am going to be probably doing some vloggy stuff and some interviewee stuff. I did figure it would be helpful to have that. I forget the name of what it's called, but you, if you're watching this video, you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, it has a little back microphone and a front microphone, but I ended up going with the Sennheiser one. So rounding out the camera portion of this video, you might have noticed something that we didn't include. And this is a conscious choice, but hopefully it doesn't bite us in the ass. We'll see. I did not get a 50 millimeter lens. I didn't get anything between a 35 to a 70. We're completely missing that. Uh, that said, I'm hoping that my 70 millimeter will be able to kind of reach down into the 50 millimeter zone, etc. And then the 35 meter will be able to reach up into the 50 millimeter zone. Probably the first next lens that I'm going to be uh, adding to the kit is going to be a nice low aperture 50 millimeter prime lens, something that just really gets that. Um, and also probably uh, macro photography lens so that we can take better uh, B-roll, you know, better, <laughs> better product shots, etc. Anyways, that's it for the camera portion. And let's move on next to the accessories. Ooh. The first accessory that I think we need to talk about is batteries. So everyone that has a camera knows that when you're out on a longer shoot, your battery is going to run out and you're going to be very sad if you don't have extras. So we picked up a few extras. The Wasabi Power Batteries. After doing some research, we found that these were the uh, most reliable uh, third-party batteries. They are not the cheapest, however, they're definitely not as expensive as the first-party batteries are. Uh, hopefully it doesn't explode, and I guess if they do, I'll let you guys know that maybe you shouldn't get these. But I do have high hopes for them. I definitely put my faith and trust in them. Everyone else seems to. After turning on your camera from your batteries, you're going to want to probably shoot some videos or take some photos. And to do that, you need some memory cards in our little case. And again, case was bonus extra uh, that I didn't actually have to pay for. But the card that we opted to go for is the SanDisk Extreme. Uh, and we have a 256 gig card in the camera. And we got as a little extra gift a 64 gigabyte. Uh, and then we went with the speed of 170. This was pretty much just to keep costs down. We, I don't think we really need anything higher than 170 uh, speed. We could go up to 300 with this camera, with the UHS-2 or whatever it's called. Uh, but I felt like this will probably be enough. And if it's not, maybe we'll upgrade. But I also wanted to get something that can stand uh, up to the test of time and treatment. Because the A7C does only have one memory card slot. That is kind of a bummer. I was looking for something that had two memory card slots, but we did have to kind of concede that. But as a precaution, we did opt to go with a tougher, stronger memory card. So hopefully we don't lose any of our photos or videos. Moving right along, after you take your pictures and videos and your memory card is holding them, what do you want to do? You want to transfer them to your external hard drive. So we picked up this uh, SSD external hard drive it is the SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD. Uh, we opted to go for the two terabyte version and I probably would have gone with the orange um, drives. I forget exactly what they're called. But the reason we went for this one specifically was because there was a killer deal on Amazon shortly before Black Friday. I think it was like 66% off or something ludicrous. So this is our kind of our working drive. I do have a desktop as my main working computer, uh, but having a portable drive is just gonna be super nice and helpful. So that's more or less the major important accessories and items out of the way. Moving on to slightly less important things, but I still think is gonna be definitely helpful in our content creation game is a variable in the system. So we opted to go with the Freewell variable in the seven in one system. Uh, we got this on a Kickstarter, actually a few months back, 
we had all of these items before we actually had our camera. They were just sitting around for a while. But there was a Kickstarter going on and these bad boys were much cheaper than I guess they kind of should have been. They were getting a whole lot of rave reviews from all of my favorite YouTube creators. And so we kind of just took the plunge on them and picked them up. It's a it's a seven in one system. So it comes with this screw on cap. Um, and then this, it's all magnetic. Clip. There we go. <laughs> uh, so you have your cap, which is magnetic, and then it goes and reveals a, this is a CPL filter, but there is also a kind of a base in D filter, or you can have none at all. And then you can also have a, like a three to five stop and then a six to nine variable ND stop. Basically everything you would ever need in the filter and variable ND uh, life, which, you know, everyone says you gotta do it. You gotta, you gotta have your NDs. Didn't go with the Peter McKinnon ones. Uh, I don't have any Peter McKinnon gear actually, despite it's probably obviously very good. That said, it is more of a premium brand. And because we wanted to keep costs down and whatnot, we opted to uh, not get any of that. Just as an aside, I did get the 82 millimeter, I think. It was the largest set available that didn't cost extra. And then I did take everyone's advice of just getting step down rings. In this case, both of our Tamron lenses are, I think, 72 millimeters. Um, so we just got a 72 millimeter step down ring, and then we can just attach this uh, variable ND set to whichever lens we're using at the time. And speaking of variable NDs and all the stuff to make your videos look good, let's talk about lighting. We opted to go with the Falcon Eyes F7 Pocket Light. So you can go ahead and turn this on and we can kind of see what it's all about. It is a nice little handheld light. It can go through a whole spectrum of colors. It's got this nice little display on the back of it that lets you know what your hue is and the intensity. Uh, here we go. It has a normal light mode, which ranges from 2,500K up to 9,000K. And it does get pretty bright. This is max brightness. Um, so yes, <laughs> quite bright. Definitely gonna be good to go there. I, I've definitely enjoyed this light so far. Uh, I've used it in just some videos, pictures, etc., and it's worked really well. I do have this diffuser on it right now, which does come with the light. You can obviously take the diffuser off pretty easily. It's not the greatest diffuser, like it's just this rubbery kind of material and it doesn't attach super well, uh, but it gets the job done. And so I guess let's turn it off so you can kind of see the front of it. So this is the front of it. It is a little bit diffused there. Uh, but then lastly, there is also a third mode, which I don't think we're gonna be using a whole lot, uh, but it's a scene mode. So there's a bunch of different scenes. Right now we have it just going through the spectrum. This is a nice little heartbeat. And you can just like, you can just do cool, look at all the effects that you can do, <laughs> you know? So it's good to have a nice little, little extra side light that is unattached to wires or anything. You can put it basically wherever you want and it gives you a little bit of that extra creative freedom as well as a little bit of extra light. I was choosing between this and the Aperture uh, RB, RGB light. I decided to go for this one just because it was on a better deal. I think this was for about $75, uh, whereas the Aperture light was I think gonna be about $100. If they were the same price or regular price, I would probably go with the Aperture. Next on the list is something that is currently a little bit of a bummer. It is a top handle, specifically a small rig top handle. Uh, one problem that I have had with this, and it's my own fault, but whatever, I'm gonna still call it a problem, uh, is that it attaches via this little clamp, and I don't have that clamp anywhere. <laughs> um, so I can't attach it like it's normally supposed to be attached. So instead, I got this little doohickey uh, and I've attached it to the side there with it with the screw hole because there are a whole bunch of screw holes. Uh, and then I just attach this to my camera. So it, it, it still does work, uh, but even when it does work, I, I haven't found a whole lot of like real good use cases for it. Um, maybe just to be a little bit steadier on some 
footage. Not hugely impressed with it. Maybe it'll maybe it'll really come to shine in its own in the future. Um, but it is something that I picked up. The next item on our list is actually let me go get it. Is the Glow Five in One Diffuser. So I probably should be using this right now in the video shoot for better lighting. But whatever. I guess we can show it to you right here. This is a handy dandy, pretty large diffuser. Whoa. We have this big old, this is the golden reflector. Every big black side. And then on the inside, there's just this little zipper where it can invert. Uh, you can also get a white side, a silver side, and then the very center is just a um, sheer diffuser that you would shine light through instead of bounce or off. So this has definitely been useful. I think it will continue to be useful. Uh, it is quite big. I think I was I was thinking that I was going to have something smaller, uh, but it just ended up being you know that large. Uh, but it's been good. Next are two items that I can't show you because they're being used again. It is tripods. So I have my main tripod here attached to the camera. That is the K&F Concept S210 78 inch camera tripod. Uh, so it's the K&F tripods. Uh, it's not carbon fiber or anything. It is very large. It's not like exactly like a super light travel tripod or anything, but I wanted something that could handle whatever I, whatever situations I got myself into, um, even at possibly the cost of weight. It is one of the heavier things in my bag. Um, it does attach to the side though still, and it doesn't like really jut out. So good to go there. I did go for a very tall, one of the tallest options because I myself am very tall and I definitely wanted to have options of where I could shoot something that was like where the camera was like at basically my head level. Uh, as well as like being on like weird hills or various, you know, different terrains. And then after that, we have a, another much smaller tripod. It's holding up another little extra light over there right now. And that is the Ulanzi mini flexible tripod stand. Uh, so Ulanzi has a whole bunch of good gear that is kind of, again, it is the, we'll call it the, the rip off, the knock off gear um, that is much, much cheaper than what it is intimidating, um, but it is also still good quality. So I've definitely been impressed uh, with that mini tripod. That's basically, it's a gorilla pod, but a little bit more flexible, um, in my opinion, probably a little bit better, uh, but it's just something that we can like hold the camera out a little bit easier for vlogging or easily set up lights. Uh, it's just a nice little extra little tripod to have. And then that also, normally it fits into, yeah, we'll call it a top pocket, outside pocket. Um, so it just fits in the bag real easy. And lastly, in the accessory section, let's talk about the future plans for accessories. So it's gonna be two main ones that I'm looking out for in the future. First one is gonna be a drone. So having a drone, giving me able to get those extra neat uh, setting shots, you know, drone footage, <laughs> it'll definitely be good to have. And the other main accessory that I will probably get in the future is some kind of gimbal. So this is kind of, it'll replace this top rail, um, something that we can just get a really steady footage with, good for retail photography or just kind of any gimbal work that we might find ourselves doing. Uh, I don't intend on getting any like, like giant gimbal system, but some kind of like handheld, something that uh, just get a little bit extra steady footage compared to like our actual handheld footage, I think will definitely be a good investment in the near-ish future whenever we want to get more gear, you know? Always get more gear. We have already covered a fair amount of our other extras just throughout the video, but let's talk about everything that we haven't talked about so far. And first on that list, here it is. Gaffer tape. The tape that solves every problem. We have kind of a mini roll here. Uh, I will probably pare this down into something a little bit smaller, uh, just because it is a little bit weighty, a little bit more than we need put to put in our bag, uh, but definitely good to have, definitely good to pick up. It solves basically all problems. After gaffer tape, it's cleaning supplies. So right here, we have our nice little cleaning supply bag. Again, this was a little bit of an extra, but we got a sensor cleaning brush. 
We have some lens cleaning fluid. We have some little cleaning pen. And that should cover most of our concerns. Uh, we do also have a little microfiber cloth right there. But everything that you need to kind of keep your gear clean and performing optimally for only the sharpest images. There's also wires, all the wires. So we got this little bag here and inside it has wires. We also just have kind of wires everywhere. We have a USB big to C. Uh, we have another microphone audio wire. We have a charger. Uh, we have a car charger. We have some power wires already hooked up to make this whole shindig run. Speaking of power, kind of attached to wires. We have a power bank right here. Gives us a little bit of extra juice. And we also have a battery charger that attaches to the wall or the car charger plug. Now moving on to the last few things that we got. Here is a set of gray cards. So this was an item that I didn't particularly think that I needed, uh, but it was very cheap and it could come in handy. We're gonna definitely run some tests with those, see if they're worth their while, worth their salt. Um, but I picked them up because it seemed like a fine thing to have. Doesn't really use a whole lot of room or anything and could be very useful in getting nice, clean, consistent images. So the last little bit of accessories that I wanna talk about are things that are more in the everyday carry kind of category, uh, as well as we'll call them social accessories. So right here in this pocket is where I keep most of them. Uh, if we go ahead and open it up, we can show the big reveal, Shazam. Don't know how well you guys can see that, but let's go ahead and talk about stuff in this pocket. First up is our set of lock picking tools. Again, with all of these social accessories, do be a good person. We have little scissors, we have a bunch of different lock picks to get us anything into any area that we might need to help people out if they've locked themselves out of their house, building, whatever, etc. Uh, after that, we have a stack of money. It's cold, hard cash. I think there's probably like 30 bucks or something in here. Not a whole lot, but something to get you... Sometimes you just need cash, whether like electronics are down or you just don't want to deal with credit cards or you're just doing a little, little business transaction between some individuals getting some lunch from somebody it's always good to always just have a little bit of cold hard cash on your person something that is a little bit conflicting maybe um it is cigarettes so i don't personally smoke uh but i know that in social situations you might be asked if someone if you have a smoke for someone you can say, yes, I have a smoke for you. You can get a little bit of uh, influence that way, maybe figure out a little bit of extra information, talk to the locals, people on the street, figure out all that good stuff, share a little smoke. It's a nice little way of paying someone who does smoke. And then speaking of the smokes, you of course have a lighter to help them out. So again, a lot of times on the streets, you'll be asked if you have a lighter, or at least I am. Um, and in this case, the answer is yes. So it's good to be prepared. Uh, and then lastly, I do have a knife. Um, it is, however, not in the bag right now. It is in the car. Uh, but again, I just have a knife for various, you know, sometimes you need to cut things. Another accessory that is not necessarily camera related, but definitely helps in the whole workflow is a pair of Samsung Galaxy Pod Pros. I am a Android user and as such definitely go with the Samsungs instead of the AirPods. These little pods come out, they're just, you know, they're AirPods essentially. Uh, they are however very waterproof, um, so that is definitely a big selling point for me. Specifically the, the Pro version or whatever I got is the super waterproof version, uh, but I definitely will have no qualms about going into the pretty wet and wild weather. Um, and also just jamming out to my tunes, etc., while out in the great outdoors, taking some beautiful photography. So it's, you know, not exactly photography related, but definitely considered it part of my gear. 
and I did pick these up during Black Friday, so I'm including it here. And that's about it. We've really unpacked this whole bag, all of our accessories, all of our gear, pretty much everything. Um, I think that it's gonna be very useful. One last thing that I just noticed is a multi-tool. This is another little piece of everyday carry. Uh, very good to have. But thank you so much for watching this video. We will probably make another one of these videos every year, assuming, you know, assuming things go as planned. We will have a what's in my bag every year. We'll update it. We'll see um, everything that was useful, everything that wasn't so useful. Maybe next time next year I'll have the drone or one of the gimbals. We'll just see what time tells us is correct. Again, all of these items are going to be linked down in the description with their Amazon affiliate links. Uh, if you do want to purchase any of these through that, I do get a little bit of extra commission out of the whole deal, uh, but it would certainly help me and get more gear, get out to places to make content, all that good stuff. Help support the channel. You know, you know the whole jazz, the whole charade. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.